1.4 part B, we're talking about non-rigid transformations. So recall that non-rigid means that it is going to be not maintaining the shape. Okay, so let's make this a little thicker. There we go. Okay, so uh, shape is not maintained. So if your original is, let's say, like this, then the new one will be either skinnier or wider. Okay. So let's look at some options then. So we are going to look at y equals f of x. Let's just look at y equals x squared. So that's our quadratic. So we know that our original is just a parabola. It goes to the origin. So this is going to be where we look at a number in front of our function. And we're going to say that c is greater than 1. So if I say y equals 2x squared, that is going to be a vertical stretch. Another way of describing that is it's going to get skinnier. So vertical stretch means I'm going to pull the top and the bottom vertically, and that actually makes it skinnier or narrower. Okay, the next one, let's look at if C is between 0 and negative 1. So let's say y equals 1 fourth x squared. So this is where you have a fraction or a decimal smaller than 1 but bigger than 0. So we're not thinking about negatives at all because remember negative will do a reflection. So this one is going to be a vertical shrink. So think about someone who is tall and then they are squeezed down or maybe like a can of Coke. You uh, uh, step on it. It makes it smaller, but it gets a little fatter, gets wider. So this is going to be more like this. So fatter or wider, I guess I should say. And this one was narrower. Okay, so these are all vertical. Okay, vertical stretch makes it narrower, vertical shrink makes it wider. The number is a fraction here, the number is greater than 1 there. Okay, let's look at this one. We'll talk about horizontal. So the difference is the C is inside the X. So you're plugging in C of X for all the X's. So this is where you'd say Y equals parentheses 1 half X squared. So this is going to be a horizontal stretch. So this is where you pull it from left to right, and it's going to be narrower. Horizontal stretch. We'll have to look at that. I think I want to pull up the calculator real quick. Let's look at the calculator. So I'm going to go to y equals. I'm going to put in parentheses 1 half, oh, I don't want to close up parentheses, so I want to back it up and put an x in there and then do squared. And let's hit graph and see what that looks like. So we're going to compare that. I'm going to go back to y equals and I'm just going to put um, x squared in there. I'm going to hit graph again. So see how it gets wider? Okay, so let's go back. So this makes it wider. So even though it says stretch, it's horizontal. So that means that your function, like your original graph, is being pulled to the left and right, which makes it wider. Okay, horizontal shrink. 
is where it gets narrower. So we'll look at that one too, narrower. So let's go back over here. I'm gonna to go to y equals. I'm gonna change this one to, need to back it up. Let's hit graph. So our original is blue. No, no, no. Our parent function is red, and our, our new one is blue. So see how it gets narrower? So even though it's a horizontal shrink, it's getting narrower. So it's getting more narrow. Okay, let's look at the absolute value function. So absolute value function is the V function. Um, it looks like a V. So it will look like this. So if I have three up front, not inside the absolute value, this is going to be a vertical stretch by three. So it's going to actually be narrower. So vertical stretch means narrower. The next one, if we're just looking at our quadratic and we have four out front, so that's going to be like this one, the g of x, like this one, where you have a number in front, so it's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of four. Okay, compare the graphs of this function now. Okay, this is outside, and it's a one-third. So this is going to be um, back over here. It's outside, so it's going to be like this one. So it's a vertical shrink by one-third. So it's going to be fatter or wider. Okay, the next one, we have the three inside. So whenever it's inside with the X, whether it's the absolute value or parentheses, it's going to be a horizontal. And it's going to be the opposite of what you would think. So it's going to be a horizontal shrink. By one third. So even though it says three, we're going to use the one third. So anytime you talk about horizontal shrink, you do the fraction for that. Okay, then this next one, we have one third inside the parentheses again. So we know it's going to be a horizontal shrink. No, it's going to be stretched because it is the opposite. By, and then we take the one third and we flip it, and it's going to be horizontal stretch by three. Okay, let's look at our quadratic. If we have one fourth out front, so that is going to be like the very first one we did, but it's a fraction, so we know it's vertical, but it's going to be a vertical shrink by one fourth. So whenever you talk about vertical, shrink or stretch, you use the exact same C value. But if you're talking about horizontal when it's inside, like this next one, you would use the opposite, so by 4. So over here, it's going to be the stretch, horizontal stretch, by 4. So anytime you talk about horizontal, don't use the number, go ahead and flip it. Okay, the next one, the four is inside again, so we know it's horizontal, but it is bigger than one, so that's where we do the shrink by, we have to flip it anytime you do the horizontal. Okay, let's do the um, square root function. So, 
compare the graph of each to the parent function y equals square root of x for each and then use function notation okay so this is a negative so that's going to be a reflection reflect across the x-axis and to write it in terms of the function notation we would say g of x equals negative f of x that would be your function notation Okay, let's go to the next page. Okay, so we're still comparing this to our original f of x equals square root of x. So this is inside. So we know it's going to be horizontal. So it's going to reflect across the y this time. If it's outside, then it's across the x-axis. If it's inside, it's the y-axis. Okay, so this is going to be h of x is f of negative x because it was inside the function. It was right beside the x inside that square root. Okay, the next one, we have a negative on the outside. So we know it's going to be a reflect across the x. But we also have this plus 2. That's our crazy x. So it, it's our horizontal translation. So anything within the function, not outside, is going to be dealing with horizontal stuff. So this is going to go the opposite of what you think. It's our crazy x. So it's going to go left 2. Horizontal. So our k of x, using function notation, is negative f of x plus 2 inside. If it was outside the parentheses, that would be the up or down transformation. Graph the free three functions in the same viewing window. Describe the graphs of G and H relative to the graph of F. Okay, so we have our original. This is our original. It's a um, cubic because it has that cubed. So let's look at G of X. Because it's inside the parentheses, we're going to have a left 2. And this one has 1 half outside, so this is going to be a vertical shrink by 1 half. So we're going to look at those in the graph. So let's go to our calculator, go to y equals. I'm going to clear out what this is. Clear, clear. Okay, so the first one is x cubed. Minus 3x squared. Okay, we've got to write our next one. It's in function notation, so we have to translate it back to regular notation. So this first one, everywhere that you see an x, we're going to plug in this x plus 2. So g of x is x plus 2 cubed minus 3. And instead of writing x, I'm going to do x plus 2, and i got to keep this squared. So let's go back to our calculator, and let's put that in. So parenthesis x plus 2 close parenthesis, cubed, um, and then it's minus, I hope I put minus on there, 3, x plus 2 squared. Let's make sure I put it on there correctly. Yeah, I did. Okay, hit graph. So the blue one will be our original. So the blue is the original. And all it did was go left 2. So if you look at it, look at where it hits the origin right there. The other one went left 2. So that's pretty cool. Okay, let's go to example 2. 
Okay, this is the same thing, but this time we're doing the negative. So negative is going to make it reflect across the x-axis. Oh, you know what I did? I didn't finish this one. So let's go ahead and go back up to example one. Let's do h of x. This just means I have a negative one half. No, I have a one half equals one half. And that's just going to be in front of the whole function like this. So all I'm doing is putting the, uh, the one half in front. So this one's just going to be a vertical shrink by one half. So let's go over here. Let's go back to y equals. I'm going to clear this one out. I'm going to do one half. And I'm going to put in the function x cubed. Oh, uh, minus 3x squared. Close the parentheses hit graph. And so it's in the same position, but it is a vertical shrink. So vertical shrink means it's going to get narrower. Let's go ahead and look at example two. We kind of already started it. So it's the same function f of x, x cubed minus 3x squared. g of x is negative one third f of x. So the negative makes it where it's reflecting. So our original is like this. So that means it's going to go the opposite. So that's a reflection. And then the one third, it's going to be a vertical shrink by one third. Okay, so we need to write what what it is in function notation. So g of x equals negative one third, and then the whole thing, the whole f of x goes inside the parentheses because it's outside of the f of x. So let's go ahead and graph it. I go to y equals, clear out what I have. Oh, I have the original though. Okay, negative negative one third parentheses x cubed minus three x squared. Oh, I need to back that up. Oh. And go down. I messed up. Let's try this again. So negative one third parentheses x cubed, get out from there, there we go, minus three x squared, close that parentheses, hit graph. Okay, so see how it's a reflection? And then it is a vertical shrink, so it's going to get a little wider, a little fatter. Okay, so let's go back to h of x now. So we have a 4x on the inside. So that means it's going to be a horizontal shrink by 1 fourth. So everywhere I see an x for this one, I'm going to plug in 4x. So it'd be 4x cubed minus 3x um, four, sorry, and then squared. So that's what I'm going to put into the calculator. So go back to y equals, and I'm going to clear that. I'm going to put that in. So parentheses, 4x cubed minus 3, 4x squared. There we go. So this is just going to be a horizontal shrink. Let's look at, so it gets narrower. So horizontal shrink makes it narrower. So it's the same flow. It's not flipped or anything like that. 
Okay, the rest of this we are going to do in class.